Okay, welcome back YouTube to another FPL family video and in a slight change to our usual schedule we're here on a Monday morning because frankly we did not get back in time from Spurs we on Sunday. <laughs> we did not get back in time. It was a long long journey. It was difficult get that wasn't difficult getting out of the stadium, but it's just by the time we got back we'd fed the children, put them to bed. It was like it was gone nine o'clock. It was the gone nine bed. o'clock and frankly we were knackered. So we are in a far more I don't know, I feel a bit more Calm. Usually our Sunday night live stream is like we've just watched all the football on a, su- on a Sunday on the TV and we come on and we give this sort of knee-jerk reaction to whatever's going on. Well, I feel a bit, a bit, I don't know, just calm at this morning. I feel like I can take it all in and talk a bit more, less, well, less erratically than normally I do on a Sunday. I mean, I don't know. I was buzzing. Last I don't know. Night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give us your feel on the. So obviously we're at the Spurs game yesterday. Give us your initial take on it. Give us your feel just while I adjust the microphone because I can see that we're both quite far away from it. The um, the first half we were awful. Like we were. It was not good. Awful. Not good. The second half we were a lot better. In fact, I got some stats, didn't I? I said, you know, I found some stats about the Spurs yesterday. So I'll, I'll, I'll start with them. Um, so first half, Spurs two attempts. Second half, 11 attempts. On target. This is, this is first half versus second half for yeah. Spurs. Because let me tell you, I'm really interested to see these stats back up the eye test. Because the eye test was night and day. Yeah, first yeah, and second was. half, Night and day. On target in the first half, no shots. On target in the second half, four. Hit the woodwork three times in the second half versus yeah. none. The most interesting one yeah. for me here is expected goals. 0.06 in the first half. That seems like a lot for the first half, yeah. frankly. It was that bad. 2.07 in the second yeah, half. Yeah, it was so much better. It what really happened then? Was, was it uh, Conte getting his hair dryer out early yeah. doors? I mean, he but probably didn't expect to get it out quite this early, but it I don't know, did he give him a rocket or what I happened? Think we all thought he needed to get it out this early. <laughs> um, he also the other one that's interesting here is five touches in the box versus 18 touches in the box. Now, yes. I think that I think there was a number of things that were going on in the first half. I think obviously we did have a, a couple of key problem areas on the pitch in terms of the injury to Romero, which fundamentally changes how we play at the back, but also yeah. the um, suspension for Ollie Skip, which meant that Winks was playing. So there was a lot of players in there that... Oh, Harry Winks had a difficult first half, didn't he? He did. Oh, oh, oh. And there were a lot of players... He was getting some pelters from the stands, I can tell you. I well, can tell you. There was a lot of players in there that weren't necessarily regularly in there. Yes. Maybe let's say it that yes. way. And I think they took a while to get into it. And then at half time, there was just a there was more energy, there was more pace, there was more drive, there was a lot more commitment from the players. All right. Um everything was better. All right. Well we'll talk in a bit more detail about that Spurs game because all those stats that you've reeled off there and the eye test suggest that there was something that happened at half time. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's something in the cup of tea they had at half time or whether Conte just threw the tea around. I don't know, but something happened and Spurs came out much better in the second half. But as usual, guys, we'll talk about that game. We'll talk about a few of the other games at a high level because it's you know, a Monday, right? We're going to probably won't do the sort of hour and a half that we usually do for a live stream, but we'll maybe do a 40, 45 minute video, see how we go. We have some questions from the patrons as well in lieu of the questions that we normally would have in the live chat. So we'll go for a few of those. And of course, we'll be looking at our teams and how we got on this season, uh, this this week, how we got on this week. Um, and I, for one, need I need to take more risks. I need to be riskier. I took a risk this week, and it didn't quite it didn't, pay off. No, but it wasn't. No, hor- it wasn't horrendous. Well, we'll talk about your team a bit later on because going against the Salah captain this week was a risk, no doubt about Just, it. It could have been brilliant. I was impressed that you took it. But for the next four or five weeks, I'll be amazed if you do it again. <laughs> I will be amazed if you go against Salah Captain over the next few weeks because his fixtures look unreal. And yet again, the Egyptian King delivered against Arsenal. And could he have done a lot better? Yes, were it not for what can only be described as the best goalkeeper in the league at the minute, Ramsdale. What's absolutely happened to fr- Ramsdale? Oh, my days. What's happened to him? Unbelievable. Why has he suddenly become like... I know they lost 4-0, right? But without Ramsdale, it would have been worse. I'm and Salah saying. could have had more. Could he, have had more. If he keeps doing this, he's got to play for England, hasn't he? Ahead of Pickford. Oh, there's a shout. I'm I, sorry. It has to, well, if he keeps playing like yeah. this... Yeah. I'm sorry, Pickford, you're out. You're out. Sorry, mate. Ramsdale looking very, very good indeed. Um... So this is the point at which we'd usually say hello to everybody. We'd... Hi, everyone. So hi, everybody. Uh, no live chat, but yes, hello, welcome, and hope you had a good game week, and yeah, happy Monday to all of you out there. Um, so we're not going to do that, Sam. We're going to go head first into the game week fixtures and start talking about these games. So um, where do you want to start? I think we've 
We've already started with a little bit of talk about Spurs, so I think we should just carry that on because okay. I'm interested to hear, in particular, we've talked about um, the team, we've talked about the setup, etc. Let's do a little bit on that, but I'd like to hear from an FPL perspective what you thought because the goals came from Hoiberg and Reggie on, right? So anybody that got Reggie on in, well done, fair play. I don't remember, and I was sitting next to this guy. Uh, obviously, I'm not a season ticket holder, but your, your mum is, and I was sitting in her seat. And the guy next to me, Dave, shout out to Dave if you're watching. Hi, Dave. Did tell him about the did tell him about the channel, of course. Um, that Dave, who's a reg- very very regular at Spurs, mm-hmm. uh, yes. was saying, um, you know, he can't, he physically can't remember the last time a Spurs player um, followed up on a free kick. He genuinely, he was sitting there, he was like, I genuinely can't remember the last time we had a free kick. And it fell to like a Spurs player from a, you know, a fo- that, 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 that there was players following it in. So to see Reggie on doing that, that's a great. positive, right? That's a positive. Yeah, I mean, I think the first half, as I mentioned before, we won't talk about too much because it was dreadful. Um, only to say that actually Leeds played very well for a team that were half a team um, in that first half. Yeah. They did well. That's a, And to be fair, that is a that is a comment to make at this stage. It that is, was yeah. a That was a Carabao Cup. Leeds team, I mean, wasn't they, it? They were missing their best players. There was yeah. no Rafina. There was obviously still yeah. no Bamford. There was no Robert. There was uh, there was so many missing key players for Leeds yesterday. But the first half, you wouldn't have known it. I mean, in part, that's because Spurs were so awful. But in part, it's because Leeds played well as well. And they did take their opportunities. They did. They did. So credit to them. But the second half, I think that's where we need to focus. Because for the majority of FPL managers, if you're looking to invest in anyone from that game, it would be Spurs, given the run of fixtures that Spurs have coming up. I... Was pleased to see what happened at half time because they they came out better, didn't they? It was immediate. Like well, Harry came, came immediately, yeah. had one off the post. Yeah. Within um, seconds, right? If you yeah. were still getting your beer at half time, you'd have missed it. Well, I took yeah. Evie to the toilet and we were literally <laughs> walking back down the steps. If you'd have missed the Kane goal, you'd oh have my god, I'd have gone mental. So yeah. we'd we'd literally got to our seat as Kane was running forward, and I and I so I stopped in the alleyway, and then I realised I was probably blocking everyone's view. So sorry if I'm <laughs> to watch it happen, and I was like, oh man. Um, but yeah, so I was pleased with that because there was an immediate response and I actually could, what was interesting for me is I was sitting quite near Conte and I was watching what he was doing. He kept, Very animated, wasn't he? But I guess that's his style, it right? It was, but yeah. he kept pulling Kane over. I don't know if you spotted this from where we were sitting in different parts of the stadium. He kept pulling Kane over and just talking to him and then Kane would go off and do something slightly different on the pitch. Yeah. And I thought that in itself is interesting because you're, you're actually coaching, you're, I'm watching you coach players. Yeah live in play which we never get at Spurs like that never <laughs> yeah. happens um, Nuno and, and Joe say you just don't get that no yeah. <laughs> so but it was good because you could see Kane trying the things that Conte was saying yeah. and played much better and was unlucky not to return in that second so, half so talk to me about Kane's positioning because a lot of FPL managers got on Kane this week because I saw this as a good fixture and I, and I still think that's a good move and Spurs fixtures going forward look okay so there's no panic on Kane I don't think particularly yeah. as he could have had FPL points easily in certainly in that second half Yeah. but a lot of the reason FPL managers were getting him this week was that well Conte wants him to play in that nine he wants him to play as that striker more advanced in the box don't drop deep I saw a little bit more dropping deep from Kane, and especially in that first half. In the first half, he dropped deep a and lot. And maybe that was part of the problem. Maybe that's well, not think, what Conte wants him to do. Well, yeah, and I think in the first half, we were awful, and he wasn't getting it. We know Kane is one of those players that likes to be involved in what's happening. And of course. in seasons gone by, that's happened as well. When, when Spurs haven't been playing well, he naturally drops deeper because he wants to get the ball and he wants to be involved and try and drive Spurs forward. And that just... In the first half, it was old Kane, definitely. We were starting to see this whole cutting a frustrated figure, not really involved in the play. Second half, he... There were occasional moments where he would drop in, win the ball. But what I was watching is what he did then. Because in the past, he wouldn't always... He would play the ball in and wouldn't always then follow it through into the box. But he was making the run. So he'd play the ball from deep, but he would go forwards. And he'd end up in the box somewhere as well. And I thought that was interesting because... If he's therefore still going to drop deep to win balls and put them in, he's still got the opportunity to get assists for us as FPL managers. But yeah. the fact that he's then following it in, and the the guy, the free kick is a prime example of that. The fact that we are following the ball yeah. in. That's a that's a basic that obviously Conte in his first couple of weeks has gone. Look, if you get a free kick edge of the box, bloody follow it in. Yeah. They tell that they they, they tell they, it to they, the under eight. The under eight London Cody Colts that we watch on a Sunday with our lad. That's what they teach them yeah, at that yeah. age is follow the bloody thing in. And but, it's nice to see Spurs finally doing it. And it wasn't even just from free kicks. They're actually going in. More of them are going into the box. There were every attack, there was two or three of them up there rather than it just being, you know, Sun on a counter or Kane on a counter yeah. or more. You know, there was a lot more of it. And I I 
I was quite impressed in the second half. I thought we we played well. We were engaged in what was happening. It was a real team effort, though. The whole team were going together. And I do think that in next week when Skip is back, that will improve that midfield because we were lacking a holding midfielder because Winks for sure in that so in that first that first half in particular I noticed and it it, I wouldn't say that it happened a lot in the second half either but you found solutions to it was that Eric Dyer would pick up the ball in that sort of ball playing centre half which I I think is probably Romero Romero going forward probably but But not for six weeks six game weeks yeah because he's not available right so Dyer's got to find a way to be a bit more of a footballer right he's got to be more comfortable on the ball and come out of defence with it and I noticed in that first half there was no one to give it to. No. So what he's looking for, he's looking for Winks to show himself, right? Winks has got to show and he's got to receive that ball back to goal, Winks, and he's got to turn and then yeah. and then be the transition player. And it just it just wasn't happening for Winks. And every time he got the ball, you could see Gerald Hart and others. Um, you know, they would do, you know, Gerald Hart in particular, I thought, noticed that. And he did a really good job of getting in around Winks so that every time Eric Dyer got his head up and looked for Winks, mm. Gerald Hart was either there or he was a yard or two away knowing that if Harry Winks gets the ball in that position and I close him down, he'll lose it. So I think Leeds' game plan kind of yeah, worked did, from that yeah. perspective in the first half. And what I would say is in the first half, I also thought that the wing backs were quite ineffective. They weren't really able to, because the ball wasn't played out as as Conte would want it to from Dyer through Winks and yeah. then out to Reggion or Royale. They were both ineffective. Royale had a very bad first half. He was... They all they all did. You can't single him out. No, but in particular... But I'm singling him out because in the second half, yeah. I thought he was one of the players that showed the most... He was the most different, I thought, of all of them, actually. Mm. In the second half, he was making runs. He was in the right places. He was making himself available down that wing. And there were some really nice balls coming in from him as well. So the assist potential is definitely there for him. All right. So just to finish up on Spurs then, are you... How's What's your overriding feeling? Are you optimistic coming yeah. out of that second half? Or are you still a bit concerned because of that performance in the first half? No, I, I am optimistic. optimistic. I think You've I, got to be, haven't you? I also think, you know... And I, uh, I don't like to relate our rhetoric about international breaks, but he lost a lot of his players over international break in terms of they yeah, weren't okay. with him for training. A whole week now of training under Conte's style, I think we'll start to see more of that second half stuff because he's going to just keep rocketing them yeah. and they'll have to up their game. <laughs> he's just going to keep rocketing. That is the Conte style is what's going to happen. But talk to me. Talk to me about that left-back position briefly then from an FPL perspective because we saw late on in the game Sessegnon come on for Reggion. Yeah. And if you brought Reggion in this week, fair play, he's got the goal. So nice one, you get the FPL points for that. Do you think there's a bit of a rotation risk now going forward with Session coming in there? Because Session did an all right job. He did an all right and from job. what I heard in and around me from the season ticket holders at Spurs, there is a little bit of a little bit of a narrative there about wanting Session to get a few more minutes because you know, he's not going to have to do a lot of defending in that wing back role under the Conte system. What he's going to be what Conte is looking for is a is a wing is a wing back mm. an attacker that's going to have pace and fly down that wing. So Session on paper Probably fits the bill better than Reggion does, oh, doesn't he? I, 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 just saying, just saying. Mm, no? Not for me. No risk. I mean, there's always a slight risk, but for me, Sessignon okay. has to really up his game if if he's yeah. going to get in there because he's not a better player than Reggion at the moment. Um, and Reggion does a job mm-hmm. and he gets back, and particularly at a time where our defence is struggling in terms of having lost Romero and we're playing sort of second, third choices in, in that middle three spot. You want somebody that will get back and defend. And re- Do you, though? I'm not sure Conte's that bothered about those guys defending. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I think you saw Reguillon getting back, and you won't get that from Sessignon. You just will no. not get him in there. So there are going to be occasions where Reguillon just... I think Reguillon offers you far far better a, a player in that position. And Session has been injured for such a long time. He's going to take a Got long time, time yeah, to come course. back into yeah, this. Um, and over the Christmas period, maybe there's a slight rotation risk when there's lots of minutes, but I wouldn't be too worried. OK, all right. Well, let's look at the Spurs fixtures going forward then, because they remain top of the ticker. It's Burnley away next, which actually, you know, I would say on paper doesn't look... I mean, you know what Burnley can be like at Turf Moor. They can be resolute. Can. Um, we've seen a bit more of a, a bit more of a Brazilian Burnley, aren't we, nowadays, with their all-out attack mentality. Not all-out attack, but you know what I mean. They are... Yeah. They're not the Burnley that we know from a few seasons ago. Is my is the rhetoric I would I would spill around those guys. But then it's Brentford and Norwich at home, particularly that Norwich game in fifteen. I mean, let's see whether the new manager bounce and Dean Smith can continue. can continue. I mean, back to back wins now for Norwich, which is whoop, whoop. unbelievable, frankly. Um, but whether they can, you know, whether you know they can go to the Spurs stadium and get something remains to be seen. Then it's Brighton away, Leicester away. So 
Yeah, the fixtures look great. So from an FPL perspective, no one's panicking on Kane, I don't think. And I don't think you're panicking on Son either, despite back-to-back blanks now for the South Korean. Look, the, re- the reality of the situation is with both Kane and Son, they both could have and probably should have returned in that second One off the bar for Sonny, wasn't it? One off yeah. the bar, a couple off the post for Kane. There, there, should have been, there should have been returns for both of them. So if you've invested in either of them, you can't sell them now, even... Even with how attractive the defence is, I think you have to give those boys another week. Yeah, and you're right to talk about the defence more on the wing backs, not just at Spurs. No, not at Spurs. But well, not just at Spurs. I mean, let's. Well, there's, it's part of the conversation. But you're right. There are wing backs at other clubs that are doing absolute bits at the moment in FPL. Um, a word on Leeds then, like you say, a, a Carabao Cup team, Rafina and a few for them, others. Because really, they could have got something out of that game in the first half. Yeah, like they had a full strength team. Yeah, I must. I can't help but think that you know, had Rafina played in that first half, he'd have returned. I can't believe that he wouldn't have got something out of that because they were creating chances. They were getting in dangerous areas. And in the in you know usual thing that I say about Spurs is they they do give away chances Spurs but they're low xG chances. Well, Rafina likes to score a low xG chance, so mm. he's got COVID. Uh, I think is the is the rumor. I don't know whether that's. Uh, I think FPL just says he's ill, right? So I don't know whether it's illness or COVID. I don't know. So keep an eye on that, Rafina owners and others, because Leeds right now appear to be a bit down to the bare bones in terms of players. They've mm. got a lot out, but. There was a couple there, Calvin Phillips in particular, who I thought had a really good game. I thought the first Calvin half... Calvin Phillips were, was very, very good. first half leads were really good. They were yeah. they were really good. They were by far the better team. Second half, they also got a number of opportunities and Bielsa was going absolutely mental right at the end of the game. <laughs> Watching those two managers on the sideline was great fun. They were great, hilarious. great fun. And Conte yeah. was like shouting at the crowd at one point. <laughs> I was like, this is quality. It's like being at a show. Yeah. <laughs> Hoiberg as well. He loves a bit of, you know, get the crowd but up, he doesn't he, Hoiberg? It. Yeah, they're all at it. They're all at it, that one. They're all at it. They must have had a rocket at half-time. A Conte rocket, as you rightly say. Um, Let's go all the way back to the lunchtime kickoff on Saturday, which was Leicester nil, Chelsea 3. And we talked briefly before about the full-backs doing bits. Well, here we are again. Another week goes by. Another assist for Chilwell. Another assist for James. Talk to me about this Chelsea team right now. But a goal for my boy. A goal for Tony Rudiger. Yes. uh, Which, when we see my team a bit later on, which has Rudiger in it, guys, you will see why I'm not that happy about the Rudiger goal. Um, I want to talk about this Chelsea defence, right? Because, yes, Lukaku's coming back and, and maybe we need to have a conversation about that with his old club, Man United, coming up next, who we've got... And we've done Got 20 minutes hours. already. I said, at the beginning of this video, I said, well, I'll do it 40, 45 minutes. It's clearly not going to be a 45 minute video. We've got so much to talk about. But we do need to talk we about Chelsea. We've got to talk about every game. We've got to talk about Manu and Oli later on. We have to. We have to. Um, but Chelsea 3, Leicester 0, it was all about the defenders again, wasn't it? I know Kante scored a bit of a worldie there. Pulisic coming off the bench to get a goal. Great for him. But you're not looking at either of them in, in FPL, I don't think. But these defenders, Chilwell, James. Chilwell could have had a couple of goals, by the way, from the highlights I saw on Match of the Day. The Unreal. One, right at the beginning of the game, off the post. Unreal. The crossbar. These guys, I mean, who have you got? You've got just Rudiger, right? Yeah. You don't have Chilwell or James. You no. must be considering a sideways move to at least one of these guys. You must they're more, be. They're more expensive. Well, so, of course they are, because so. they're getting double-digit holes every week. Rudiger ain't going to score every week, right? The 14-pointer... Why? He's just not. He's just it's not, is he? Chelsea. He's going to be... And in this period of fixtures we've got coming up, he's great, right? Because he's going to play but most he's of the least... games, going to be consistent. But this period of fixtures that you've just mentioned where yeah. everything gets quite tightly congested, he's the one that won't get rotated. I know, I know. But isn't it boring having him in your team no. against Chilwell or James? I mean, yes, it is. In terms of... <laughs> I could have to, But it's not boring owning Rudiger. And this is the thing I think... It is boring owning Rudiger. No, it isn't. Because I think you can easily do the double up with Rudiger and another one. Like, there's right. nothing wrong with owning Rudiger. The question, the <laughs> question, I guess, is do you double up and go with James or... Do you spread? So this week, my priority transfer in was a City defender because yes. I was at a point where yes. I was like, I I just have to deal yeah. with this problem. And you were right to do that, and right? Cancelo, good. absolutely ripping it up right now. So yes, you're right to do that. But now I'm at a point where I'm now looking at my defence. And so the only way to have James <laughs> as well is either to go sideways from Rudiger, but I actually do like owning Rudiger. He isn't getting nothing. He's regularly t- churning over the points. So bit, that is a luxury transfer, Rudiger to James, for it you, is, I would suggest. But if you've got Chilwell or James, happy days. Would you double up? Would you have, if you are on James right now rather than Rudiger, 
would you do? Would you be getting Chilwell in your team as well? James and Chilwell as a double up. They look like the most. That's where the attack is coming from right it now. Is, and when yeah. Lukaku comes back, it's surely only going to benefit them because they're going to get more assists. James is going to that put more balls so, in the yeah. box. I just can't see a world where I don't own Reese James in FPL going forward. I have to have him. The, the, I think the only the only negative I have, and it's nothing to do with them because I totally agree with everything you've just said, is that we're also talking about how we want Trent, we want Cancelo. You maybe want to look at the Spurs wing backs, maybe, but they're not in the same league as this. But, yeah. You know, that's so... the challenge, isn't it? You can't find a space for Reguilón and Royale right now in your team because the others are doing so amazing. And and you're also therefore talking about you you've got to take money. So the the re- I take money out my forward line this week in order yeah. to do the Cancelo move. So if I want to then take up my fifth, well my fifth mid my fifth defender is Livramento. So do I really want to take Livramento yeah. out because he's offering me such great five at the back every week. I mean I could I'm saying it now. Well, go for it. I mean, I've got, I have actually, to be fair, I have lied there. I have still got Brandon Williams, haven't I? Um, so I could. You got Brandon Williams. Well, yeah, I've still that got needs him. to get upgraded. Yeah, but come on. So to upgrade Brandon Williams <laughs> to Reese James, that's not just just like a, oh, I just upgrade Brandon Cut Williams million. to, to yeah, Reese yeah. James. That's got to take some thought and it's got to take some budget that's coming from somewhere else. So then you've really got to start questioning. Well, how much do I want to take out of the like? I look at my middle players and I think there's nobody really there. Unless Jota is injured. We've got to keep an eye on that. Keep yeah, we've got to keep an eye on that. He's currently that. flagged, I saw this morning, Monday morning on FPL, currently flagged with a knee injury. Yeah. Um, knee to knee, apparently. Well, yeah, it, it, it looks to me, I don't know, not a doctor, not Ben Dinnery, so plenty of people you can follow on Twitter better than I to talk about this, but it looked like an impact knee injury. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is he's not, ACL'd it. It doesn't look as if he's twisted it. It doesn't look like it's a bad one. And we have got but I don't. I don't know. Week, but I don't so know. So we will get an insight on Wednesday from Klopp as to yeah, yeah, what's yeah. happening with Liverpool. Yeah. So he's... I would be absolutely astounded if Jota plays in that Champions League game. We're already through, right? So he's going to put a B team out anyway. Should have thought so. If Jota's got a bit of a knee, you, you've got to protect him right now with Firmino out. And then with the boys going off to the AFCON, Salah and Mane at some stage, right? So you, you, he's got to wrap Jota and Cotton Wall. He will not play in that Champions League game. So he's the one to keep an eye on. But otherwise, it's Antonio or Kane that's got to come down. And, and the Spurs fixtures, I'm not... I'm really not sure I want to take Kane down yet. So it gives me but some... But you can have Chilwell and James for the cost of a Kane. You can have both of them. And they are doing double-digit hauls every goddamn week, these guys. Well, I don't want both of them and Rudiger. I don't want three Chelsea defenders. That's <laughs> Why not? Just saying. That's a minus eight for okay. me to do that. Okay. So, you know, I think you have to just... You have to plan for these things. It's not just a case of... For me, anyway, the way that my team is set out, to go to Reese James for next week is going to be a challenge right. on the basis right. that... I have to plan for that move. Okay. In the same way that I had to plan for the Cancelo one this week. All right, well, let's have a look at the Chelsea fixtures going forward then. The Chelsea fixtures read Nine reasonably next. well. Um, it's. I mean, I was looking at this and thinking, oh, they're mid-table. If you look at the Fantasy Football Scout ticker and those of you that are members on Fantasy Football Scout, if you're not a member on Scout, there's a membership link, all that sort of stuff in the, in the description below in the video. Um, but if you are a member at Scout, you can go to the members area, sort the fixture ticker by difficulty rating. And by the way, if you disagree with the difficulty ratings, you can change them. So Fantasy Football Scout gives you the flexibility to create your own difficulty fixture rating. But according to those experts at Scout, of which you are one. Um, <laughs> Don't point at me. <laughs> according to the experts at Scout, what they are saying is Chelsea, very much middle of the road for fixtures. But let me read them out to you, Sam. Man United at home. New manager bounce. Give over. Carrick. Give over. Fletcher. We're going to talk about Man United in a minute. And I think that has got the potential to be an absolute murder at Stamford Bridge Oof. next week. Um, Watford away. Okay. Have you seen Watford? Have you seen Man United? I mean, Watford are positively, positively bouncing. <sighs> bounce. New manager, bounce. Don't give me that. Then it's West Ham away. Okay. Difficult fixture. Leeds at home. Everton at home. Those fixtures for Chelsea over the next five are sumptuous. West Ham away in uh, 15 is the one where you would say, okay, that's a difficult game. The rest look great, including that Man United game. Uh, at, at no point do I disagree with you. Yeah. Uh, but you're still not getting Chilwell or James. But I, No, it's not even <laughs> that I'm not going to get them. It's just that they need it needs careful thought and planning so that okay. you don't... Good job you're a good FPL manager, Sam, and you put careful thought and planning into how you're going to get Chilwell or James. 
You've not, have you? <laughs> You've not. I've not yet. I mean, I've just got through this week. Like, I, I spent all my time... It's just time, Monday. It's only Monday. I spent all my time like, the last couple of weeks working out what was going to be my entry point for Cancello. Yeah. Now, I can spend some time... Yeah. You, You're this... playing catch-up. You're playing catch-up. You're one or two moves behind everybody else. Oh, shut up. <laughs> right. Where are you? Where am I? <laughs> no, exactly. I'm miles behind. I'm miles behind. Uh, let's talk about, um, well, a very quick word on Leicester, only to say... What's happened to Leicester? Well, I don't know, but... My theory, and this is just a theory, so don't kill me for this. Oh, my theory is that Rodgers is already gone. gone my th- what, to my, Man United? I think Rodgers is the next Manchester United manager. But they, they're not and I think that, him. Well, I think that it's Poch already done. Ten Hag. Well, I think it's done. I'll be honest with you. I don't know. There's no smoke without fire. And there was a lot of smoke a few weeks back about Brendan Rodgers. Anyway, regardless of what you think about Brendan Rodgers and the managerial situation, Leicester, absolutely in the mud at the minute. However, Sam, however, let me point you to... Let's go back to the fixture ticker that I mentioned before. They are second on the ticker, only after Tottenham Hotspur, with Watford, Southampton, Villa, Newcastle, and then Spurs up next in the next five. What do Vardy owners do? If you are sitting on Jamie Vardy... Well, that's a question for you, my love. It is a question for me. It is a question for me. And I have to say, I am keen as mustard to bin him. But you can't now. So we had this conversation on... What day was (laughs) it? Friday. We had this conversation when you said... so Lee went a bit rogue on Friday night. I was like, I'm thinking about oh, don't. making these random transfers, one of which was Vardy out. And, but you said to me, and the reason I'm bringing this I'm up glad is... I didn't do that, by the way. Well, yeah. Do you want to tell everybody those moves I was considering? Well, you were going to bring in Ronaldo and I was, Reggio. I was going to do Rudiger and Vardy out for Royale oh, what? and Ronaldo captain. That's what I was going to do. It wasn't Reggio. No, R- it was Royale. Royale. I was not because Roy, Reggio was five and Royale was 4.9. Four, so I, I was 0.1. If I had the money, I'd have done Reggie on, but I didn't. So I was going to go Royale. So that would have worked out terribly for me. So I'm glad I didn't do it. But I'm but still keen to have been Vardy. But on Friday evening when we were having that conversation and I was thinking you were lost <laughs> You're the plot. Muppet, yeah. um, and you said, but the thing that puts me off is that next week, yeah. it's the reverse with Ronaldo and Vardy in terms yeah. of who's got the nice fix. So now I've got to keep him, haven't I? So now you're in a place. So you've been talking to me about forward planning, but now you're in the mud, aren't you? <laughs> I'm absolutely in the mud. Because what are you going got... to do with Vardy? Because did you see anything from Jamie Vardy in this game? No, I didn't see anything I from Leicester at all. I saw absolutely jack all from Leicester that would make me want to invest anything in them. I don't think he knows his best team at And just the to point something out to you, Sam, Leicester losing 3 0, by the way, top for BPS this week amongst Leicester players was Schmeichel with 15. So that tells you a lot about how much worse it could have been for Leicester <laughs> and the performances of the rest of that squad. I don't think Brendan Rodgers knows who to play at the moment. So he doesn't know whether no. to start with Barnes or Ian Nacho. Does he well, play what happened Nacho? at half-time? Like, he just makes multiple substitutions and yeah. it's just... Uh, half-time in this game? Change what the are whole they? formation. 2-0 down. Oh, I, I can't remember whether he started Ian Nacho or Barnes. but he. It was he Barnes, brought... wasn't it? Barnes and Madison off? Yeah, but... He, well, Madison like came on at half-time with Ian Nacho and Barnes That's came right. off. And it's just like, what are you doing, Brendan? You don't know what you're doing. Or maybe he looked at it and said, "Well, we're two 0 down. I've got to be. I've got to change it. I've got to be more tacky, and I've got to bring Ianacho on." But he doesn't know his best team right now. He doesn't know. And last season, their best team was the team that was with Ianacho in it. Yeah. And maybe you need to go back to basics. Yeah. But something's fundamentally wrong, and I would be concerned. Yeah. About Jamie Vardy and his. I mean, in the same way, I'm concerned about Spurs. But at least I saw attacking Something potential from Kane. Yeah, there yeah. was attacking potential when he could have returned. I saw nothing from Jamie Vardy. Yeah. Well, my problem is now, you're absolutely right, I've, I've got to stick with him, haven't I? He's got Watford at home. I mean, I can't... And it, I've got. It's very the, hard to sell him ahead of Watford. And I, and I do want to keep that premium spot open. I mean, there's a lot of talk in the community about, you know, what do you do? Do you downgrade that premium and invest it in the defence? I'm already reasonably invested in the defence. We'll talk about my team later on. I'm, I'm pretty happy with where my defence is. So to go from Vardy to Kane, yeah. that's that's not insignificant because that's about a million and a half, got right? A plan so for that. that's I haven't got a plan for that because I've not seen anywhere near enough from Kane yet to suggest no, that he's worth twelve and a half million. All of this, isn't it? But then I look at the Chelsea and the United fixture and I go, well, do I want Lukaku or Ronaldo? Well, I definitely don't want Ronaldo at the minute. Do I want Lukaku? Well, maybe if he's fit, and I could go from Vardy to Lukaku, but I don't know if he's fit. There's question marks there, and at the end of the day, Vardy has got Watford at home. I've got to give Vardy Watford at home. I've got to. I've made my bed. I've got to stick with it. If he blanks at home to Watford, oh my God. I'm going to rage him out for Huang or something. I'm just, I've had enough. It'd just be horrendous. It'd be horrendous. Anyway, moving on from Leicester City, because we're rapidly running out of time, as I knew that we would. Um, Liverpool 4, Arsenal 0. Let's talk about this game then. Um, you took a risk by not captaining Mo Salah in this game. 
as, which I would suggest you're probably not going to do now for a few weeks. No. Talk to me about the Liverpool performance. I'll talk about my view on it in I mean, a bit. I mean, I thought Liverpool were excellent. I thought not they, for 30 minutes we weren't. I thought, well, I thought Liverpool were excellent in that game. I thought that there was plenty of opportunities to perform well. I thought Mane, and I don't want to keep banging on about Mane, and I know he got returns, but I thought he was awful again for a large chunk what of that game. What are you talking game. about? No, I did. What are you talking about? I thought he was awful again for a large chunk of that You're game. You're joking. No, I'm not. Did we watch the same game? Maybe not. The first 30 minutes, he had a stinker. No doubt about it. But awful. then the whole team did. And then Klopp and Arteta had that row about Mane, because it was Mane's challenge on Tommy Asu. And from then on, he was dynamite, Mane. Uh, see, I just... What are you talking the about? The underlying stats are really good for Mane. And yes, and so are the FPL points. He's doing great. The FPL points are also good, but I don't like watching him at the moment. <laughs> at all. Where's I this Liverpool that... hatred coming from? No, it's only Mane. Come on, The rest man. of them, fine. I thought... i tell you who I thought Come had an on. excellent game. Simakas, who I thought <laughs> God, was absolutely <laughs> brilliant again. Yeah, but you can't bring him in because Robbo's going to have that spot, right? You can't bring him in. I don't think Robbo deserves that spot. Oh, shut up. Come on. I don't he did think... play well, Simakas. He did all right. I yeah, thought Simakas right. deserves some game time. Mm, he did all right. He's going to get game time in the Champions League, though, right? But, but I thought Liverpool played well. I was surpri- a bit surprised at the Arsenal performance. I thought that they might be a bit better than they were because they've been really good. Ramsdale was their best player by a very, oh, very long way. He was fantastic. So good, yeah, he him. was utterly fantastic. Um, he's putting out like worldies left, right, and centre like every week, and I, and part of me, just... part of my goalkeeper thinking is that uh, maybe this is watching Allison for a few seasons and keeping an eye on Edison, and and I'll put Hugo Lloris in this bracket as well. Oh they God. they rarely make worldy saves, like worldy saves that you think, oh my God, that's front page news that save. But that's because they are so good positionally, they are so intelligent these goalkeepers that they they don't need to, right? They don't need to because they're always in the right space to make a comfortable save. Am I am I right to think the opposite of Ramsdale? Am I right to think that positionally he's a bit he's a bit wobbly and actually he's got to pull out these worldy saves in a bit of a Pickford like way? I don't want to I don't want to do it because I like him and he's and he's he looks I love his character Ramsdale and he's English so I think he's a great hope for us next year and I, and and some of the saves he's pulling out are fantastic but is he that good a keeper or is he just in great great form at the minute? I feel a bit dirty saying that because I do like him. I think you've been really hard. I've been a bit harsh there. I think you've gone in a bit. Yeah, that's because you, you dug out Mane and now I'm now I'm I'm it's upset. A bit, a bit unnecessary that was. <laughs> was Poor oh, Ramsdale. <laughs> he's having a blinder and I'm he's like, he's actually, actually not that good. Week after week after week, <laughs> he's having a blinder. Um, look, I, I mean, I thought Ramsdale was fantastic again. I thought yeah, yeah, I thought Smith no Rowe doubt. also had a decent enough game. I thought Saka had a decent enough game. The rest of the Arsenal team, I thought, they just weren't... Newcastle at home next. Don't panic. If you've got oh, Arsenal no, assets, don't, don't panic. Don't panic at no. all. And I think, you know, it was against a good Liverpool side. I just expected... And maybe maybe because Arsenal have been playing well against some lesser sides, I expected more from them in this game. I think that's that's that was the bottom line. I expected right. Arsenal to just be a bit better than they were. And maybe it was a bit of a leveller coming up against Liverpool that says there is still a bit of work... Yeah. for Arsenal yeah, to yeah. do but my goodness I thought acid test for them right especially yeah. the younger players Tavares losing the ball and giving it away to Jota for the second goal yeah he learned right he learned yeah. he's a young player but you know don't panic on your Arsenal assets you know particularly no. if you've got Ramsdale if you've got what's Smith interesting Rowe. for me is how they how they bounce back from this right I expect them to beat Newcastle at home next week well, so interesting. keep your Arsenal assets but from my perspective if we get a reaction from them they could be really good for us next week that's how I'm looking at Saka, and surely how you're looking at Smith Rowe is, I've got to keep oh, because I really Newcastle like at home, home, nice. Um, and actually, if we get a really good reaction, like I hope that we do, because I like this Arsenal team. They're a young team, and I like the, what, what Arteta's doing with them. Um, then they could be great. Mm. The only thing I would say is it will be Eddie Howe's first match in the WL. It will, yes, it will, and that will sure. potentially give them a bit of a boost on the back of what happened this weekend. Yeah. So, so no panic, no on Arsenal, panic on Arsenal, but Liverpool. Liverpool go on. I mean, I saw this as an opportunity, potentially, because I was, ex- as, as I've said, I was expecting Arsenal to just be yeah. a bit better than they were. And we all know I have the rule about if I go to a game, I captain a player I'm going to watch. It's always been my rule. Yeah. And 
You get to Spurs any time in the next three or four weeks? Because if you go against Salah next three or no, four weeks, I'll be amazed. Don't think I'm going. <laughs> no, not exactly. going this time yeah. of Christmas, so we're okay. Um, but I just saw it as a bit of an opportunity where Salah had a difficult game and he didn't return with the same level that you know. He Salah was... had a difficult game. No, on paper it was a difficult game oh, right, against right, okay. Arsenal. So he had it on paper a difficult game. Kane on paper had an easier game. Yeah. The form obviously was the complete opposite, but. I thought I could go there and shout a bit at Harry and he might, you know, let's go. <laughs> might so, the post. And actually, to be honest, I've got to say this, I really enjoyed captaining someone else. I know that's a ridiculous yeah. thing to say. Yeah, but fair to be enjoyed, FPL, right at the end of the day. It was a moment where I, I don't regret it either. No. Like, yes, it's cost me a tiny bit of rank, but it is a tiny bit. And yes, my arrow would have been green had I captained Salah. Yeah. But I don't regret it. No, and right, I think, you know, going yeah, into enough. the next few weeks, you're totally right. I can't see me captain in anyone other than Salah. Um, he did perform really well. I, I, he is quality. He is utterly quality. I thought Jota so had good, a good man. game as well. I thought Trent had a fantastic game as well. I've maybe gone in a bit hard on Mane, but I'm not seeing... But I just... <laughs> the thing is with Mane is I know that he can be so much better than we've seen recently. I think that's where the frustration for me comes. I think he's in great form at the minute. It, there's mo there's moments in the game I get a bit frustrated with him where he might give away a pass or something, but he's deadly at the minute. But I just he's maybe deadly. It's I just think we're all overlooking him because we've all got Salah. Well, that's and Jota's true. that much cheaper. That's the that's that's, definitely that's true. why no one's got man and FPL. Because oh, yeah. if you want to double up on Liverpool midfield, yeah, why would you spend twelve million and eleven million when you can spend twelve million and seven million? I mean that's definitely true, but I do think with Mane, every time I watch him, I think God, you could have got so much more than you did, and I think that's where my yeah. negativity towards him comes from. Is that I find him a bit. So in any other season, in oh, FPL, you'd yeah. be looking at him going, well, how do I get him in? Of course. But how can you? Because we've got to buy 8,000 premium defenders. Yeah, got to have full-backs, got to have the wing-backs everywhere. So, so Liverpool, from my perspective, very good. Jota, um, let's see what this knee injury looks like. I think I think we'll get a feel from Klopp over the next couple of... Because we'll have the European press conference, as you say. We'll have the press conference ahead of the next game. Just, I, I think get him. Who I got think, next? I think get him. Oh well, let's have a look at the Liverpool fixtures. Good, um, good shout. Let's have a look at the Liverpool fixtures. Um, pretty good. It's Saints at home next, and then it's Everton, Wolves, Villa, and Newcastle. So that looks like a run where you would want to treble up on Liverpool. I'd suggest. And if you've got Salah and if you've got Trent, which a lot of you will have, I know, um, that you absolutely got to stick with those two, and you've got to think about who you supplement that with. And if you want, and if you can't get excited about Harry Kane yet. If you want to wait on Ronaldo and Lukaku, if you want Vardy out of your team like I do, um, maybe put that money into Mane. Maybe. But for, but for me, he's not worth the five million you've got to find over Jota right now. That's that's the bit. That, if Jota was it, if Jota's knee is a bad one and he's out for a few weeks, then the Mane rhetoric might come back around. But for now, you? you can't you can't spend that extra on him. You but you, I also don't think you can spend that extra on him over getting a wing back from another club. Well, this is it. This is it. You're taking money out of yeah. the forward line. But I we knew this. In game week one, when we saw Mane's price, we knew this was the case, right? He's mm -hmm. too expensive. And you're going to go the whole season ignoring him because he's too expensive. What I'm saying is, over the next five, if you want a decent differential to go alongside Salah, whatever you do, do not sell Salah for Mane. And you're probably going to captain Salah for each of those fixtures, let's face it. I mean, there's nothing there that you'd worry about, quite frankly. Um, and to be honest... Away to Villa in 15, given what happened last season. Steve Gerrard, Gerrard. And Stevie's there. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen in that game, but it could go off. It, Liverpool could go God, off. I've forgotten that game, about that I game. Think. That game last we season. We were live, weren't we? Honestly, that game last season, there is so much. Like, I, I watched You're a still lot bitter of... about it. You've, your whole. Yeah. Your whole. Of course I am. 7 <laughs> 2, Sam. Of course I am. <laughs> your whole body. <laughs> What? Changed. Everything changed in that moment. Of, you remembered it. The whole yeah. point of everything you said and the way you said it changed. Trust me. <laughs> trust me when I say we as a fan base and therefore I think the players and the manager, they, they, were, they were mentally scarred by that game. Champions going into that game being beat 7-2 by Villa. Trust me they're going to want to put that right. Steve and Gerard's going to want to repeat it. Triple captain Salah game at 15. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm putting it out of it. Let's go to the next game. Let's go to the next game. Let's cover a couple more. We've got to. We've got to. I'm sorry, Man United fans. If you're in the chat, there is no chat. If you're in the comments, <laughs> um, let us know how you're feeling about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Sacked, Sam, after this game. Sacked. 
by mutual consent. And for the podcast listeners, I'm doing the air quotes by mutual consent. There was a board meeting uh, shortly after the game where they all decided that now was the right time to sack Ollie, even though they don't have anybody to come in and replace him, even though they have a really difficult game coming up against Chelsea. Now, Sam, was the right time to sack Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer. What are we saying? I mean... How bad were they in this game, first of all? Let's cover the game. How bad were they? Awful. Take nothing away from Watford. Watford were very good. But United were absolute dog, weren't they? The, the one, Absolutely The one terrible. thing I will say here is they made Watford look like... Oh, yeah. They made Watford look yeah. like Liverpool. They like, made Sissoko look like Iniesta. It was unreal. What, Sissoko nearly scored in that game. Nearly if scored. Sissoko nearly scores in a game, you yeah. know that you've played badly. They against... lost 4-1 and they missed a penalty. I mean, I love Sissoko. And, but oh, uh, look, uh, Watford... Let's take nothing away from Watford. They did their job. They went out there, they played, yeah. and they beat the team that were in front of them very, very well and very, very convincingly. Shout out Foster owners, by the way. If you stuck with Foster for this game, get an, get an assist. How good's that? <laughs> Foster with the assist. Um, Love it. Yeah, nothing negative to say about Watford. If you want to go Dennis because you want cheap forward up front, fine. I don't think there's anything nah. that inspiring about going Watford, though. So, apart from Foster, when did his assist potential... But with when it comes to Manchester United, well, for a start, they just they were fighting each other. Bruno was fighting with the fans. They, uh, that was interesting at the end. That everything's that, gone wrong. That Ollie was going to the fans and he was putting his hands up, saying, "Look, I know, I know, I know." And obviously, the fans—not that we could see it on the pictures—but the fans were obviously giving it to Ollie. And Bruno was kind of like, "No, no, 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 no. This is you know, this is a collective. We all take responsibility." So there's. The mood in the camp is... And that's why it was the low, right decision to, sa- to sack him. Like, so, yeah, yes, the so. moment is wrong I guess so. in terms of they've got Chelsea up next. There's no decent available managers. So the moment is terrible from many from many perspectives, but also the moment is correct. When you look at the ha- what happened in that game against Watford and what happened with that limited away fan base at the end of that game, it was the right thing to do because mm. clearly... The dressing room is gone, but the fans have lost. So what are we saying about FPL then for Man United going yeah. forward? You're not bringing in anybody ahead of Chelsea, are you? Well, no. But, and, and so what's going to be interesting now for us as FPL managers, what Manchester United do next? So they've already said it'll be Carrick, it'll be Carrick for now yeah, yeah. with Fletcher helping him. I mean, that sounds like a brilliant managerial yeah. partnership for Chelsea away. Um, Tuchel must have, Ch- have Chelsea fans. If you're a Chelsea fan, get in the. Co- I want to hear from you in the comments. How are you feeling about this game? They've got well, to be licking their lips, haven't they, Chelsea? I mean, I don't know. I mean, they, they, we've got a Champions League game to play midweek first. So, oh, for both sides. Me. So, look, let's see what happens here. The, they're saying at the moment they want to get an interim manager till the end of the season because they want to get Potter or Ten Hag in isn't the it? summer. Yeah. Well, yes, that's I what guess, the, that's what the I guess are it saying. is going to be Potch. But, again, this, Not is, that easy, a, this is a bad... This is bad business by Manchester United because both of those managers have just signed new longer term contracts yeah. with Ajax and Paris so it's, it's going to cost them more it's Why almost Sam like they should have done it a few weeks ago and got Conte isn't it well we at the, in the first half of Spurs <laughs> we were so off we were like is Conte oh, trying to get himself dear. sacked to go to United yeah. That's what, is that yeah. why we're playing so badly um, but no in the end uh, look yes they absolutely should have done this weeks and weeks and weeks ago. If you had Ronaldo in FPL, what are you doing? You can't sell. Can you? Chelsea next. Of course you can. Who'd you get, though? That's the question. Who'd you get? Well, you... I think well... if you're a Ronaldo owner after that, with Chelsea up next, and Kane's got Burnley and shown a bit of form in the second half against Leeds, I think you're a sideways move, aren't you? Would you do that move? I oh, know. Well, you would. Because it's, <laughs> it's two Canes. So of course you would. But if I had Ronaldo, that's what I'd be doing. Or I'd be having a cheeky look at Lukaku if he's fit. I would want to wait, honestly. Yeah, yeah. And see what happens in the Champions League and see what happens this week in terms of who they're going to get okay. to manage them. If it's going to be Carrick and Fletcher till the end of the season, then my God, just get off. Get off now. Just leave. Just leave. I think leave either way. Uh, and what was most amusing to me, I guess, as a Liverpool fan, sorry, Man United fans, um, was that, you know, the outgoing goal for Ollie's tenure was by Donny van der Beek, a player... That we'll I think laughing about it, that we? I think would have solved a lot of United's problems if he'd have just been. He might get more game so just, time now. Honestly, I don't know what Ali's doing, but anyway, he's gone. So 
Adios, Oli. Adios. Um, so much else to talk about, Sam. We, we, we've got to briefly go through these games, but um, Burnley 3, Palace 3, absolutely bonkers game. Two for Benteke, who I think you called out as a jammy pick this week. Whether you did it, did you do it on our channel or Scout's channel? No, we're not. It's on our channel. There pick. we go. So go back and watch the jammy pick video, guys. Or, although it's jammy picks for game week 12. So what's the point we're trying to make here? The point is subscribe. The last to the... couple of weeks, I've got the jammy picks. Subscribe to the channel. Quite because well. when Sam's jammy pick video comes out, you're going to want to watch it. Last couple of weeks, tomorrow. there's been great jammy pick differentials coming Tuesdays. out, including Benteke from this week. Um, and Newcastle 3, Brentford 3 as well. No, uh, nothing for Mbomo, which was... Disappointing. Well, that was one of the league. Patreon questions actually that we had was about what do we do with the Brentford assets because. Well, Tony got his goal. Tony got his goal. Enrico <sighs> Henry got another goal. But in Bomo. In Bomo owner, what are you doing? Well, I don't know. I've got other things in my team I want to do, frankly. And actually, like the fixtures uh, for Brentford, let's like Vardy potentially, yeah. And let's look at the fixtures for Brentford. I don't think they look too bad. It's Everton at home next, then it's Spurs, Leeds, Watford, United. So, listen, there is potential for Tony and Mbomo to get goals. But I don't know how often or how much longer I can sit here and talk about possible goals for Mbomo. I mean, I, the fact he's hit the post six or seven times this season, I'm starting to wonder whether he's just not a good finisher or whether he's not Ooh. getting in the po- I don't know. It's how That's how quickly the rhetoric can change around players like this, right? Because I bought him in for Norwich and Newcastle. I'm like, right, those two games, Norwich and Newcastle, despite what's coming up afterwards, which is pretty good, Norwich and Newcastle, bang. Got to be points there. Got to be points. Mm. And even if you've got Ivan Tony, guys, if you get in the comments, if you're a Tony owner, is that enough? Is one goal enough from those two games for you to hold? I would say it probably is just. But in Bomo owners, what are we doing now? Because you've got Conor Gallagher, who's playing great for Crystal Palace. You've got Smith Rowe, who's going to be up against Newcastle at home next. There are other players in that bracket now. Do we get off in Bomo? I'm, I'm tempted, I'll be honest, but there's other things I want to do in the team. Yeah. Would you sell him if you had Mbomo? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just... It's those two games. Norwich, Newcastle. I just... No FPL points. I'm, I'm a bit... I've got a, I've got a bit of a, a beer in my bonnet about Mbomo. That's, that's easy to say, by the way. got a beer in my bonnet about Mbomo at the moment because of those two games. That's my problem. Can I keep the faith? Should we keep the faith? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I mean, know. I went Smith Rowe at the same time you did that. Yeah. Good move. We're happier with that. Good move. Tell me about Newcastle then. LaSalle scoring at both ends, which is quite comical. Um, the goals kind of spread around, actually. One for St. Max and an assist, by the way. Joe Linton as well. Nothing for Nothing Wilson. Nothing for though. Wilson. So if you're a Wilson owner, again, what are we doing? I think you've got to go away to Arsenal next, too. Obviously, that's a difficult game now for Eddie Howe. Mm. I think you're expecting to get something from this Brentford game. But if you're a Wilson owner, I think you've picked him for a reason, not just for Brentford at home. So I think you've got to ride that storm out a little bit, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Okay. An assist for Fraser, by the way, which made me laugh. <laughs> After all of the, the the cloud at which he left Bournemouth under Eddie Howe to get an assist in this game was quite comical, I thought. Um couple more games to discuss, Sam. Uh Wolves won West Ham nil. Tell me about your two transfers for this week. You got rid of Jimenez and Samedo this week. Yeah. Why? Because I had to get Cancello. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to, somebody had to be sacrificed and it was a straight choice between Jimenez and Antonio and yeah. honestly I couldn't bring myself to sell Antonio just yet um, and so I thought what about now? what about Antonio out now? well now have I've... a look at these West Ham fixtures Sam have a look at these West, West Ham fixtures coming up I've got to talk you through these so West Ham bottom of the ticker away at City mm-hmm. can he score? yes he can but... I don't want him to I've got Cancelo now well there's that there's that but you know you're not backing him to get a haul there Brighton at home, Chelsea, Burnley away, Arsenal away. These are not games, I don't think, we're expecting much from Antonio. Now listen, West Ham having a great season, don't get me wrong, despite the defeat here away at Wolves, still you've got to say they're having a good season. What are we doing about Antonio now? Because these fixtures look pretty awful. He's not. These are not games where he's going to get two or three goals. No, don't know yet. He's, he's on the agenda for maybe somebody that gives me a bit of money to upgrade Brandon Williams. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I basically made the decision. So Samedo, I don't care about the clean sheet because he was never getting in the starting 11 anyway. He would have always been my first sub. So right. that that is as it is. Jimenez getting the goal. I knew if you sell Jimenez... He will burn you. He will hurt, because, but he's never going to hurt that much. He's owned 
It's very Why does low- he never brace, Jimenez? Never. Why he's does very, he always just get one goal? He's always very low. He's also very lowly owned as well. So yeah, in terms yeah. of like what he's going to do to rank, what a great differential! He was been a then. great differential. Yeah, oh. he was. Yeah, yeah. But but then I wouldn't have had Cancelo, who okay. got yeah, yeah, okay. twelve or whatever he got. So I just wind in you. Because yeah, those, you... those two, those two transfers out. When you saw that result, honestly, <laughs> fuming. That, <laughs> uh, we were driving home when that result came in, weren't we? And just I was like begging Antonio to score. I was like you? just. <laughs> to be honest, I'd have taken any West Ham goal. A Craig Dawson off his backside, anything. you'd have taken it. I'd taken, taken anything. It, yeah. I would, yeah. That, I mean, that that was peak FPL. That that result, it really was. <laughs> it really was. It really was. But you were like, so you were happy with the Cancelo, but it was weeks, just like, oh, all those really? weeks I've had Tomato since my wild card. Yeah. Is it has he returned any points? Absolutely zero points. And then the week <laughs> <Yeah>. of <laughs> selling me clean sheet. Okay. I mean, it's typical. But but it still enabled me to have Cancelo, which was yes. the important thing. Yes, interestingly, three points for Ryan Eight Nuri, who we got a heads up from the manager, didn't we, from Bruno Lager before the game that he's going to get the start, Eight Nuri. So if you did bring him in, fair play, well done, because he got the three bonus points despite not getting a goal or an assist. So he must have played mm. very, very well. I've not seen the highlights of this game, but must have played very advanced, must have got into those positions that we like for FPR underlying stats and BPS. So one to watch maybe, but of course you've got the spectre of Marcel always there looming over Eight Nuri as a potential rotation risk. So... For me, not one I'm going to go to, mm. mainly because I want to spend big in my defence, not on the likes of Ryan Aitnuri. I think there's others out there that are willing to pay a premium for um, because they are that good. So there's a very, uh, I would say brief, but a, a look at the fixtures for the game week, Sam. Um, let's go and have a look at how our teams got on. Do you want to do me first or you? How would you like to play I'll do mine. Let's do you. Okay, so... A very small red arrow, which for a non-Salah captainer... I'm quite pleased with this. I think you've got away with one again this week, I'll be honest. Oh, you are. You've got away with what one there. What's wrong with you? Were it not for Ramsdale, Salah's got a couple of goals and an assist, and you're in the mud. Whereas, as it is, you've fluked that. Minus 2.2%. Don't you're in the mud. That. So you've got an overall points of 777, seven, 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 which is... That's got to be lucky, isn't it? Is it? Again, very lucky your team this week to have got away with the Salah non What are you talking about? That's fate, isn't it? Your total points is 777. If that doesn't sum up your season, what does? Game week points 69, <laughs> overall rank 229k, a rank change, a very small red arrow of 2.2. Talk us through your team. Wolves trolled me. <laughs> Cancelo yeah, came disgust. in came in into bits. Pep trolled me. Pep, stop taking people off on 58 minutes. Why, yeah. Pep? Why? We didn't discuss that. Foden, problem in your team now or? Oh, no. No? no? Hold it. Why would it be a problem? It's West Ham up next. West Ham not an easy you game for them. You just said that Watford are a problem. <laughs> West Ham are a problem. Oh, no, I'm not I'm not worried about Foden. Um, I love winding you up on these like videos because every time I do, your voice goes higher. Like, And I just, if I keep twisting the knife a little bit, it just gets higher and higher and higher. Go on. Go on. Foden with the one point, so not great. Yeah, not great. <laughs> yeah. The rest of them, like Kane genuinely, and I'm not just saying this, he could have got a goal, probably should have got a goal in that game. Antonio's a frustration. He's one that is definitely on the cusp of feeling annoyed about. Yeah. Um, but, but, he, but herein lies why, and we'll see in my team in a minute the same. Here's why we're going big at the back. 14, 15, 12. It's crazy. It's crazy. These premium defensive assets yeah. are doing the it's business. Like, and I, I thought Brighton were going to get a clean sheet till right at the death when Steven Gerrard managed to get something out of that game. Yeah. So that would have been six for... Damn you, Ollie Watkins. Well. He was also in the jammy pit. Yeah, was he in the jammy pit video? <laughs> He's another one I've been talking about this week, though, J- get Ollie him in Watkins. Then. Yeah, I mean... Stop I, talking about these players. Get him in. I do a lot of talking about players and don't bring them in. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Go um, on then. So... A reasonable... You've got to have a look at Jota now. We've got to see about the knee injury. Smith Rowe, not a problem. Newcastle up next. There's not a lot to change in that team. But what are your early thoughts about game week 13 then? Where are you looking for transfers? Well, I'm going to probably roll. Because right, okay. it, because there's nothing that may... Unless unless Klopp comes out and says Jota's out for four weeks, he won't. But if he did, then that would be problematic. Be Otherwise, well, yeah. Otherwise, I'll probably roll it, to be honest. Because they've a lot of them got nice fixtures next week. And then that gives me the place to do something more major the week after in terms of another premium defender probably okay. but that means taking money out as well which would mean a hit don't want to take a hit yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. well there we go total point 777 the luck that has gone with the Salah non-captaincy the swerving of the big red arrow there only the naught but the 2.2 percent down to 229k it's basically so great. every bit of luck that you get sam I do not get it. I what do are you not talking about? You've got 
What's your green arrow this week? A green arrow this week. <laughs> 71 points. Uh, 755 uh, overall uh, points with 428k. So again, up 10%. Which is fine. Again, my team is so template, guys. And I've been talking about this for a few weeks now. My team is so template that whenever I have a game week, it's either a little red or a little green. And again, it's a little... Um, it was Saka. It was Saka. Okay. So, again, I'm... I, Rudiger sitting there. So annoying. It I mean, is so annoying. It's your fault, though. You should have made better bench oh, decisions. Shut you? your face. It was... I was so annoyed. Is that, that, are you getting... A, is that high pitch now? Rudy, like, yeah, <laughs> shut just, up. <laughs> Rudiger, <laughs> Rudiger with, his, with his six-point ceiling, I'm just like, right, do I want to double up against Leicester away? Yeah. And again, swaying my decision, bloody rat face Vardy again as well. I'm sitting there thinking, well, if I've got Vardy in my team, do I want to double up Chelsea defence? Well... No, so which of those two I'm going to play? Clearly, I'm going to so play Chitwell. <laughs> Benched Rudiger. Not only that, second bench him as well. What a disaster. Why, Why would you oh have a relatively premium defender and second bench him? Because I just thought every week I bench Livermento and he's got Norwich, so I'll play him. And I thought, Rudiger has got a six-point ceiling and I, I backed Leicester to maybe score in that game because i got Vardy. So not only is Vardy not getting me points... He's influencing my decisions away from getting points with the other players that I have got in my team. But yet you're not going to sell Vardy. I know. I don't <laughs> understand FPL. It's so bloody annoying. It's getting on my nerves. Um, so anyway, the back line doing the business. Trent, Chilwell, Cancelo. Those three, Live bar an injury. Shall bar an <laughs> injury. I am not moving any of those three. They look so good. They look so, so good. And as you'll see, I fancy Cancelo for captaincy. They even viced Cancelo, right? So... Salah captain, obviously. Um, not going to change that now for the next few weeks as we talked about the Liverpool fixtures. So what are your feelings about risk now in FPL? Not about this, forget my team. This is more of a macro FPL conversation well, no. because we're all going to captain Salah for the next four or five weeks. I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. Yeah. So your transfers, and certainly my transfers, and I have two frees coming into next week, I want to take some more risks around the edge. I've got a template team... And I have a, I'm going to have a template captain for the next five weeks. But what should I do? This was my point, right? Is that as part of the reason I went with Kane this week? Because it was an educated gamble. It didn't quite pay yeah, off, but it I wasn't like the it. end no, of the world. But, you, but the only way to get decent traction at the yeah. moment is to, is to differentiate your team in some way. Having said that, had I played Rudiger, we'd been would have been fine. I'm one decision away from a big green there, aren't I? One decision. It's a Livramento versus Rudiger. And even if I'd have jammed it off the bench, if I'd have made him first sub rather than second sub and Rafina had come on, come off, I'd have, I'd have jammed those 14 points. So I'm a bit unlucky, aren't I? A bit unlucky. No, you're not <laughs> unlucky. It's bad management. <laughs> Shut up. Give me what? What? Give me that. Anyway. I, I, tell, I love wine. So what, what, should, I, what, so my, but what my, should I be doing? So my point is... I'm too template. I've got to do something different. The only way to make massive traction... So otherwise you do what you do, which is make very, very small incremental changes and, yeah. and it and it gets you where you want to be in the end but it's going to take you maybe 10 12 game weeks or you take some educated gambles now for me this goes back to that conversation that you were having before and you were talking about needing to own Reese James well, yes I get you but you own Rudiger and Chilwell if you go sideways from Rudiger or Chilwell to James it's going to make your team more template, if anything. Yeah, so, true, true. So, Reece James, good though. I don't disagree with you, but yeah. you're saying you want to make your, t- you want to, you want your diff. And I've been saying this for weeks. It's what I say on my Jammy Pit videos every week. Your differentials need to do the work for you. They're the ones that will bring you the green. Yeah. And if you nail them, they will make your arrow green because Salah captaincy is going to make everyone level. So yeah. you've got yeah, to yeah. make your transfers work for you. Now, actually, where you are at the moment. Jamie Vardy potentially is a great differential that if he Don't returns... Don't tell me to keep him. I'm not interested. Just saying. That what I'm looking at, so my transfers that I have considered for the next week are, it's a new front line. I want a new front line. How many transfers you got? I got two frees. And I want rid of Vardy. And who? And, and possibly Antonio. Oof. Based on the For fixtures, who? Lukaku. Well, I'd go Vardy to Lukaku, and I and I'd need a bit of money to do that, so I'd have to do Antonio down to like Jimenez or something like that. You can't have Jimenez. Of course I can. You cannot. Of course I can. If I want a steady return of points from a nice differential, I would wouldn't even dream of selling Jimenez. Oh shit! Terrible would that be? <laughs> so I've got. That's what I'm thinking, guys. That's what I'm thinking. I'd love. I, I want to get Reese James in. I I, I don't. 
you can say what you like. You ain't going to talk me out of that. And yes, it's a template move, but he's so well, good. Well, that's a minus four then you're doing. Might do. Might do. Might go for a little mini wild card. I might do. I mean, Reese James in. Antonio and Vardy. For what? Antonio? Um, Rudiger? Rudiger to James. Sideways, yeah. Sideways. Rudiger ain't getting 14 points every week. And when he does, I bench him anyway. So, but that's what I'm looking at. Looking at Rudiger to James as one of my transfers. And then possibly doing something with Antonio and Vardy. But I think what you said before is absolutely right. You've got to wait it out. Let's get the Champions League games out of the way. Let's see, let's see. But for sure, I can see myself going into next game week. You're not going to go sure, surely. Absolutely not. (laughs) But what I can see myself going to next game week is Trent, Cancelo, Chilwell and James. I can see those four being my defence. Man United. 100%. You'd play the Did you watch Man United this week? But you wouldn't play them against Leicester, but you will play them against Man United. I will now, yeah. I will now. There we go, guys. That is it for tonight's episode. I don't know if we've left that. Have we left that on a bit of a row? I think we have. I don't, I don't <laughs> understand you. I don't understand. Oh, there we go. Let's talk about what's going on this week very briefly. Shows, podcasts, anything going on? No. No shows? No podcasts? No. Oh, goodness me. All right, guys. Well, the the only thing left to do There'll be jammy then, picks and stuff on our channel this week. Well, that's week, what I'm saying. Course. The only thing left to do, of course, is to hit subscribe so that you get the jammy pick videos. You get the top points pick videos from Sam. As we go through the week, well done to all of you in game week 12. If you've got a good score, green arrows, well done. Get in the comments below. We'd love to hear how you guys got on. What was your score? And what are your transfer early transfer thoughts ahead of game week 13? Are you going to target that Chelsea versus Man United game like I am? Are you going to stick with Harry Kane? Or are you going to stick with Jamie Vardy? Even though he's costing me points. Might have a party, Lee. Left, right and centre. Are you going to stick with Vardy against Watford? Guys, thank you for joining us here for this very different non-live stream, usual kind of video. Uh, we'll be back as usual, next Sunday, 8.30. As usual with the live stream, we'll have the chat. We'll have all of you guys back in. Very much looking forward to it. Until then, thanks for watching the video. Leave us a like before you go. Don't forget that subscribe button and the little notify bell. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye, guys.